Morning Hawaii with Maleko McDonald, Lei Uika Holokula, and Davey D. This is Good Morning Hawaii. Right now at 7, an arson investigation underway at the Zippy Zinuan Kiki. What we now know about the suspect as this investigation continues. And all eyes on Washington today as the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on Capitol Hill released its findings in prime time. And we are leading into the Kamehameha holiday weekend and the week's long celebrations that continues. We're going to tell you what's happening throughout the islands and how the holiday could actually affect your commute. Aloha to you and good morning, Hawaii, and uh, thanks for joining us here on Kiku TV. Oh, hi, because I must. 7 o'clock here on this Aloha Friday morning. It is the King Kamehameha Day holiday observed, so a lot of people got the day off today. I'm yeah. Aleka McDonald. And I'm Lake Kaholokuli. You know who didn't get the day off? Davey D. He's, gonna, he's <laughs> stuck with us this morning, but he's going to tell you where not to go, you know, because there's going to be a lot of uh, traffic congestion in some areas. Yeah, especially uh, over the, uh, the course of that parade route, which is, uh, of course, going to run from King Street all the way to Kapi'olani Park, but that's tomorrow. Right now, traffic looking pretty good and our weather feeling are really good. We got those moderate trade winds. They're going to start increasing tonight with some winter and mocha showers expected. We do have a band of showers just to the east of Hilo or Hawaii Island and Maui County. So that's going to start to ride in on the trade winds. And when we get those trade winds, we get the typical trade wind weather pattern moving across the island chain. And again, nothing blocking our trade winds making its way. And we have a, a associated ridge that's going to start to strengthen and that's why those breezy trade winds will start to return as we head into the Kamehameha Day holiday. Our eight-day forecast you can see picking up speed over the weekend and also lasting throughout next week with our temperature highs in the mid to upper 80s for today. Moderate trades again just another day with uh, warmer uh, conditions but looking forward to the weekend. Uh, if you're going to head to the surf flat to two over on the north and west facing shores less than three for the east side. Now driving conditions look pretty good no stalls or accidents to report on street parking free buses operating on a holiday schedule for today and our drive times look might cut you with no issues the only thing is that sun blasting into your eye as you're making your way through Waimalu just about 20 minutes uh, from Hoikai or Kaneohe into downtown Honolulu here's a look at uh, your neighbor island drive times and now you're up to date we'll send it back to Maleko and Lei. All right, thank you, Davey. Our top story this hour, Honolulu police searching for a man suspected of arson at the Zippy's restaurant along Kapahulu. Yeah, it took 40 firefighters to put out the fire this morning on Kapahulu Avenue at Zippy's. The fire department responded to a report of a shopping cart fire inside the restaurant that happened just before midnight. Police are investigating this as a possible arson. Now, it did take crews almost two hours to put the fire out. No one was injured and no one was inside the restaurant at the time of the fire. That cause is still under investigation. accused in a murderous string of stabbings to be held without bail. 24-year-old Chito Asuncion is being accused of going on a stabbing spree that spread the island, killing two people in Kona and then injuring a man and woman in Hilo. He made his first appearance in court Thursday. He's facing multiple murder and attempted murder charges and he's being held on one and a half million dollars bail. He's back in court Monday. We're also learning more about the survivors of a tour helicopter crash that happened over on the Big Island. KLITV4 has confirmed the identities of three of those passengers. They are Clay Watson and his two daughters, Kennedy and Clayton. Now, Watson is a 48-year-old Chattanooga, Tennessee auto dealer. He and his daughters were here on vacation. Taylor Tipton, who is Watson's brother-in-law, says that the family is waiting for more information from authorities and appreciates the thoughts and prayers from the community, but would not comment on the health conditions of of his family members. Now, a licensed pilot and attorney who has litigated aviation cases in Hawaii says that there are three major concerns for local tour helicopter companies. Number one, they need to follow the uh, common air tour procedures manual. It was written by the FAA to increase safety. Number two, use twin engine helicopters on most of the flights, especially on Kauai, where the terrain is so unforgiving. Um, number three, you need to have make sure that the pilots are trained specifically to the Hawaii topography, routes, and microclimates. 
Well, Sanger says that he litigated a case in April 2019 against KNS hel helicopters when one of its chopters ran out of fuel and then crashed. KNS operated the aircraft involved in Wednesday night's accident, too. And our continuing coverage continues. Ali Iduklo reports from the Big Island on the helicopter company and what aviation experts say about the chopper itself. Because of the crash, Paradise Helicopters is not flying any tours as of Thursday. The company reports it's a standard safety procedure and it's unclear when they'll resume operations. Despite Wednesday evening's crash that injured all six people aboard, this woman says she'll continue to fly with them as she has been for the past 14 years. I just really trust them. You know, they're the only ones that I, I use now. Whenever I have guests come, I always actually prefer Paradise Helicopters. An aviation expert tells me the National Transportation Safety Board will have to consider many factors in its investigation of the incident, including whether the pilot lost clear view because of weather conditions or if the company has been properly maintaining the helicopter. But he does know the aircraft, a Bell 407 rotorcraft, is reliable. These helicopters are built, they're engineered uh, very well. Uh, hundreds of millions of dollars goes into the research and development of these machines to produce a reliable product. This is the 42nd air tour crash the NTSB has responded to in Hawaii since 1997. Ten of them were under Paradise helicopters. Ali Iduklo, KITV4 Island News. Thanks. Uh, well, there's still no word yet on what caused a house fire that erupted in Chanted Lakes on Thursday morning. Now, we did bring you that fire as breaking news on Good Morning Hawaii at the time. The fire did break out just after 5.30 in the morning. This was along Hele Street. When firefighters arrived, they found the home fully engulfed in flames. HFD says all nine residents did get out safely. We were also notified as far as some of the ha potential hazards that was involved or in the vicinity of the, the house that was on fire, which had some propane tanks in the front of the residence. And uh, we also had a, a, one of the occupants that actually had uh, oxygen bottles that was stored in the back house, which was not affected by the fire, but yet still uh, a hazard you know, for us. And again, no word on what caused that fire or where it started. Time now is 7.07. .07. A security investigation at Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam shut down surrounding roads on Thursday morning for nearly two hours. On-site officials say a military working dog alerted security of a civilian vehicle entering at the Halava Gate at around 7.45 yesterday morning. It prompted immediate action. Now, all gates were initially secured, and at the time, residents and visitors were restricted from going in or out of the area. Came outside and... The whole place got shut down. Military was across the street. Everybody, the tourists, everybody was leaving. And we were just told that it's an active bomb threat. Now, all gates are currently back open. Nothing of concern was found within that vehicle of question. Traffic resumed and the scene was cleared at around 9.30 yesterday morning. Meanwhile, part of the Daniel K. Inouye International Airport was evacuated Thursday after reports of a bomb threat there. The State Department of Public Safety said someone made a verbal threat inside the terminal. Sheriffs immediately evacuated the area and searched with explosive canines but didn't find anything. People were let back into the buildings and things returned to normal after that. Eight minutes after the hour here on Good Morning Hawaii. Still ahead, more of your headlines. Plus, we're going to tell you about a pilot program in Chinatown that helps those in need get into treatment faster. And another probable case of monkeypox in Hawaii. Why health officials say you should be aware, but not worried. Good Morning Hawaii continues. Davey. And we're like light traffic heading into downtown Honolulu, and our drive times reflect that. We've got an update on some road closures, though, coming up when we return on GMH.
711 right now, welcome back. Well, of course, we're celebrating Hawaii's great unifier of the Hawaiian Kingdom, Kamehameha Ekahi. This is, of course, leading into the Kamehameha Day weekend. And our live reporter, Shanila Kamir, joins us live this morning in downtown Honolulu at the world famous statue of King Kamehameha, where a lay draping ceremony is going to happen at around 2 30 this afternoon. Shanila has more. Good morning, Maleko Lay. Yes, people are so excited to come out and celebrate. Like you said, people are already out here ready to celebrate and for the lay draping ceremony. I'm here with the chair, Kainoa Danes. How are you? I'm here, I'm good. Thank you. So tell me, why are we still celebrating this king 150 yeah. years later? That's an excellent question. One of the important things for us at the King Kamehameha Celebration Commission is maintaining Kamehameha's relevancy. He unified the people of Hawaii. Before his unification, each island had its own ruler, its own king, if you will, and there was feuding between the islands for millennia prior. And, and though it took some war and bloodshed for him to get that objective of unification, it seems that it was for the first time in history that there was actually peace in Hawaii once he unified the kingdom in 1810. Um, He's an important figure. Some of his laws that he enacted back when he was the king are still in our Hawaii state constitution, like the law of the splintered paddle, um, where those during, during warfare, those that were not part of the battle were allowed to rest and, and, and be safe. And so basically it was an idea of taking care of those um, in need. So that's what he's, he represented. That's what he stands for. Um, in recorded history, he's the first person to have ever unified the islands. And in 2000, I think it was eight, Hawaii decided on an image that would represent us in the back of the state quarter. Every state came out with a quarter and he is our representative. We chose him to represent all of Hawaii. So to maintain that relevancy is more than just a statue in downtown, a statue in Hilo or a statue in Kohala, or even one in DC. It's more than just a statue. It's his legacy he made, uh, laid for us. Thank you, Kainoa. If you're interested in seeing this weekend's jam-packed King Kameha celebration schedule, go to our website at KITV.com or our Instagram page at KITV4. Reporting live in downtown Honolulu, I'm Shanila Gabir, KITV4 Island News.